I think people have elected not to go to the river's edge. They've heard all of the negative stories about what the body of water, and specifically the Anacostia, is or is not. Um, as a result, they tend to say, well, that's not there for me. You couple that with the detachment that this land that society has evolved to, there's so many things going on on land that we never look to the river's edge. We, we stay so focused and we keep these blinders off. We, we look at TV, we do this, we do that, we go every place, but we don't go to the river's edge. That's the disconnect. I'm a generational Washingtonian, uh, born here back in the 1940s, is that way I don't have to reveal my true age. Um, my family grew up in the southwest section of Washington on the waterfront there. I have exercised and worked out on its shorelines for 45 years. I've been paddling and canoeing it since I was about eight years of age, painting it for about the same length of time, taking photographs there. I've sailed her, helped run tugboats on her. I still today enjoy sitting there on the shores watching the sunset or sunrise. My relationship with the Anacostia River began in my early childhood. I started playing there when my father first took me fishing. As I matured, my friends and I used to make barges and things and do the normal boyish things. And with those, we used to pole around on the river as young men did in those days. And we talked about um, some of the great water stories that we had read, uh, the stories of Huck Finn. Uh, two years before the mass by Dana and things like that. And, and in doing so, we'd always envision ourselves as being the great seamen of its time. Did quite a bit of playing there, quite a bit of fishing, but more importantly, a lot of tadpole catching, which is something we used to use to uh, frighten the young ladies with. When you push off in a canoe or a kayak, or you pull out from a dock and you set your first sail, it's just a sense of um, freedom that's unequaled. And while many have tried to verbalize it and write songs and sonnets and poetry about it, it's something that I think you best try rather than doing it that way because I could explain it to you a thousand times for a thousand hours. But you could go out and it would be an entirely different experience. Your senses would be different. It's very personal when you're out there on the water because it's you, the elements, and your thoughts about what your emotions are telling you and where you are in all of this with respect to the relationship. When I'm out on the water, there's sort of a, try and search for the right word here, there's sort of a, 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 a sense of belonging, a, a sense of being a part of something that is greater than you, but yet never turns you away. There is this cultural and intellectual and spiritual connection with water that I personally and others that I've associated with on the water talk about and have experienced. I have always loved being at the river's edge. I have always been sensitive about water. In 1958, I got my Boy Scout Nature badge on a little piece that I wrote on my urban wilderness. It's probably one of the most beautiful urban wilderness, wilderness areas anywhere in the world. How far are we from the Capitol building? I said about three quarters of a mile. I love to sit there and watch the trains. I've been birding at Popular Point, the rear of the aquatic gardens, 
the arboretums, the marshlands and all for decades. I can sit there for hours. I hear people now talking about eagles along the Anacostia. I hate to disillusion people, but guess what? The eagles and birds have always been there. This is a wilderness. Humans being what they are, we make a mess of things. Do I think the Anacostia is a river with some problems? Yes, I do, as all urban waters, waterways now suffer with. We live in a region where we're still dealing with the 19th century sewage system. The idea was to move debris from the landed side into the water in hopes that the, the waterway would carry it away. The solid matter that you see with respect to uh, the trash, that's a matter of just pure human neglect. I grew up in a part of Washington in a time when respect for your natural surroundings was part of your everyday life. It's something that was instilled in you in your community. We're all at fault because none of us have taken care of that which has been trusted to us. The Anacostia, 15 years ago, nobody would thought of rowing on it. Lord knows, no sailing on it. The Anacostia Community Boathouse now on any given day and season, 400, 450 people actually use that facility. 450 people who several years ago had no idea that the Anacostia existed. They thought it was a bad neighborhood, but who now have become and developed a keen sensitivity to the state of that river. What is a great equalizer? It's a great confidence builder. When you're out there on the water, you're in one of the most volatile elements that exist here on the planet, and that is water in any form. But when you use it properly, it's very rewarding. When you learn how to sail, it gives you a sense of confidence about yourself, an air of, wow, I walked with the elements or swam or played with the elements today, and I came back. I want to see people out there recreating uh, kayaks, canoes, sailboats, and things of that nature. I want to see the river full. We can't get people to think about it if they never come to the river's edge and know that it's here. If I get you here, I can help you to develop an interest. This is beautiful. Can we come back? Well, if you like the experience, then maybe you should pay attention to how this body of water is treated. Water is not a distant beast or any of those things. Water is very much a part of you. It's what gives you life. And I think we owe it to ourselves to give life back to the water. What I would like to spend the rest of my life doing is trying to convince others that they too should take the journey.